All right, so we have already completed um, unit one, which was like an introduction to geography, unit two, which is North America, and now this is uh, unit three, Central America, and we're finishing that off, okay? We're doing the last two lessons uh, in that, okay? So Central America, uh, we did a lot on like poverty, as you can kind of see. Oh, come on. Why aren't my things working today? Nothing wants to work today. Oh, there we go. There's my finger pointer. Okay, like a focus on uh, poverty. Uh, we're going to be talking about some other topics in geography. So at the end of Unit 4, you have a paper that you will write on a topic of geography. So that's something you want to start thinking about. Um, so as you're going through, you could talk about poverty. You could talk about population you could talk about some of the things that we've been we're going to be talking about uh, moving forward but I'll explain that as we get closer uh, to unit four probably in our next live lesson okay so to keep pace this is what you should have done already you'll notice on Mondays is when I put in zeros so I had people come in and say hey my my score went from a B to an F why is that? And that's because I put in zeros every Monday, okay? Uh, you should have done a lesson one quiz, lesson two, lesson three, lesson four, lesson five, lesson six, lesson seven, and then the country presentation. I have not put in zeros yet for the country presentation. I will be doing at the end of this week once I get all of them graded, okay? So that's where we should be right now. What you should concentrate on this week is doing lesson uh, eight quiz and uh, lesson nine quiz. Okay, I think that's right. Yep. Lesson eight and lesson nine quiz, okay, which is on Central America uh, and what we're going over. Okay, any questions on where you need to be or what else is going on? Okay, seeing none, I will... Uh, keep rolling on okay so here's the objectives that we were going over there if you want to watch the recording pause it what be cool and look at all of these you can I'm just gonna jump over that right now I showed you okay so we're gonna talk real quick about uh, an Indian proverb okay so a proverb is just basically something that's been said for a long time over and over again and that Indian proverb says treat the earth well it was not given to you by your parents. It was loaned to you by your children. We do not inherit the earth from our ancestors, but we borrow it from our children. Okay? So what what do you think they mean by that proverb? Anybody? Put it in the chat real quick. What do they mean by that? Okay, so that's all right if you don't know. Not a, not a big deal. Any thoughts out there? Okay, a lot of question marks. That's all right. Okay, so what it's basically telling you is that uh, if we go in and we make a whole bunch of places and we don't have places to like farm or places to grow our crops or places to get fresh water, we're not going to have those necessities that we need, right? So we have to kind of take care of the earth a little bit um, as we're as we're moving forward okay so just being smart about it so I got a pull question for you real quick let me just put on here uh, the pulling okay the question is what is subsistence farming okay so is it a farming to feed your family and yourself B farming to raise money to make money C, farming to feed the whole world, or you could put this one as well, IDK, which stands for I don't know. Okay, so let's give you a second to think about that. Put there. I only got a couple people in. I know I got more than, let's see here, 10 people in the class, so let's put in our answers. Even if it's just a guess, you can always put in D, I don't, I don't know, I just want you to try to answer that
Okay, five, four, three, two, hurry, one. All right, and most of you guys are right. Nine of you guys put A, which is farming to feed yourself, your family, and yourself, okay? So how many, buddy, how many people grow some stuff, like have a little garden, grow some, even if you, you live in an apartment, you can, you know, get a little plant and grow some food for yourself. How many, how many people do that? My family doesn't, but my mom has plans. Okay, yeah. It's good because you never know. Like, it's always good to have that fresh stuff. I love fresh things from the garden. I don't know about you guys, but that's really good. Your grandpa does. Very evil growing plants. Yeah. I, I've i had a hard time growing plants, I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm not the best one at this. I don't have a garden right now, but I, I kind of wish I did. So the reason we're talking about these different things, okay, is we have this here, okay? Uh, somebody says, my family is planning to garden when we get to Texas. Yeah, yeah. the more area you have, the easier it is, right? So this is what we call a political cartoon, okay? Um, let me just kind of show it to you. So it has down here at the bottom, it has a scale of the years. So we're at 1 AD all the way... It goes all the way till 2050. And we have a train on here. It says the World Delivery Food System. And the train says, I think I can, I think I can, I hope I can, I really hope I can, man, I hope I can. Okay? And over here it has an increase that it's going up. And this is the population of the world. Okay? So what do you guys think this means? So you're looking at this cartoon. What... What does it mean? What is it trying to portray? See some people type in there. Good. Trains can think and smoke is scribbles. <laughs> yeah, I guess that the train is thinking, right? Haven't you ever seen Thomas the Train, man? <laughs> Yeah, it's a little, little cartoon. Okay, so somebody says he doesn't want, the train doesn't want to die. Yeah. Okay, so the train here is re representing the amount of food that we have grown in the world, right? Okay. And as the population goes up, we have to increase the amount of food we have. Okay. So somebody put, uh, the train is hoping us, or help, yeah. Hoping that we have enough food to feed people. Yeah, exactly. So as the population grows, we have to increase the amount of food that we have to do. And we've done a pretty good job through um, what we'll talk about in another unit is genetically modifying food, which means putting, you know, making them grow faster, more efficiently. Um, but the thing is, you can kind of see it, especially in Utah right now, I see a whole bunch of growth, right? Do we have enough food? Do we have enough water? Do we have enough things? So that's something we got to think about and geographers think about as we're, we're kind of going there, okay? So as we look at the world's population, this was taken, this was taken a year ago, so sorry, I should have more updated numbers, but the U.S. population is uh, 325 million, so almost 326 million people. Okay, the world population is about 7.5 billion. And as you kind of look at this calculator, you can find this calculator online actually. So uh, we have a net increase of people once every 12 seconds in the United States. Okay, so every seven seconds somebody's being born. Okay, every 12 seconds somebody dies. <laughs> It's hard to think about in the United States, right? Okay, and then one person from outside the United States is coming into the United States every 32 seconds. So basically, every 12 seconds, you are going to have a person gained in the United States, okay? So you guys have some people on here, uh, some comments. Uh, that is insane, so many people, yeah. 
The pe everybody's growing a lot. A new person every seven seconds. Wow. Yep. Um, yeah, and so that's just natural things. So we're the thing is we're living longer, right? We have better uh, health care, that kind of stuff. So we're living longer. Um, and when there's still being babies born. And there's people still moving to the United States. If you look at the highly populated countries, we're only the third highly populated country the United States is, followed by uh, China and India. They're very, very populated. Yeah, there's a huge difference. So if you ever go to China or India, there are so many people over there, right? And it's just crowded. And so they're having a hard time kind of keep, uh, keeping... Um, you know, enough food, enough uh, resources, right? And so that's something you got to think about as we're going on. Okay, let's do an A and B poll real quick, okay? Uh, according to this chart, now this chart is called, uh, um, oh crap, I'm trying to think of it. It's not a population, population pyramid. Yeah, that's it. Yep, sorry. So this is a population pyramid, okay? And so this is actually showing the United States, okay, here. And as you see, uh, it says a percentage of the population um, at the bottom. And then you have the ages. So you have 20, 40, 60, 80, um, and it kind of goes up. You have females that are on the right, males are on the left in blue. So the question is, according to the graph, who lives to be older? Would it be male or female? Okay, so look at this graph right here. Tell me who's who lives to be older, male or female. Okay, I'll give you a little bit longer to think about it. You can guess if you want. That's not a big deal. Well, look at the graph, right? Kind of see it there. Five, four, three, two... One. Okay. All right. So if you see right here, this is where we're looking at right there. See how that line's longer where I'm pointing? Uh, females. So sorry, guys. Uh, on average in the United States, females live to be, uh, be longer than males. Okay. And a lot of other countries, particularly like in South America and Africa, or in Central America and Africa, really poor places, uh, men actually live to be longer. Why do you think that is? So if you, if you were to think why in poorer countries, okay, why in poorer countries do females do not live as long as males? Okay, good. Childbirth is one of them, right? Uh, so one says males have more jobs. Yeah, but physical labor, which are more than that, those countries are going to make your uh, your living go down, actually. Um, yeah, so you got childbirth, and they don't have very good um, uh, health care over there, okay? And women have a lot more uh, problems due to childbirth and stuff like that. Um in in uh, these less developed countries, yep, we're we're so lucky to have like the healthcare we do. So, okay, <laughs> as we talked a little bit about having enough food and having things like that, um, there's a question that comes up in South America, or so not South America, but Central America, and Central America holds most of the rainforests. Uh, Central and South America. Uh, deforestation, okay? So what's happening is people are going through and they are raising cows, but they don't have any place to put these cows. So what they're doing is they are cutting down the rainforest and growing crops, or they're raising cows. Cows need room and people tear down, yep, rainforest that to make room. That is completely correct. Yeah, so so rainforest. So 
the problem with tearing down the rainforest and stuff like that is, you know, the rainforest, the trees and everything like that, they give us uh, more oxygen they have there. Uh, we also have rubber. You can only get rubber from the rainforest. Okay, so there is a lot that goes on to these rainforests, okay? But the problem is money, right? These people are super poor, and they can make money by raising cattle, and so they're doing it. Yeah, rubber comes from uh, the rainforest. So the rubber that we see like on our tires and on cars are synthetic rubber. But for like diesel trucks or like, you know, semis and airplanes and stuff like that, they need the real rubber. And the real rubber is only, you can only get it from uh, the rainforest. There's certain byproducts of there, of the rainforest that it comes from. Okay, so that kind of leads us, you know, that it, it's so, these people are in such poverty and they do whatever they have to do. If you remember our pyramid of Maslow, they do whatever they have to do to be able to um, uh, survive, right? So even though it's not good for the environment or it's not good for, for the long-term care of the earth and for their children, they're still going to tear down these rainforests and stuff like that so they can get money to survive right now because they're worried about right now. Okay, so let's answer this question real quick. Approximately how many children live in poverty in the United States? So we're not talking about in Central America now. We're talking about the United States. Would it be A5, B8%, C12%, or D18%? Children that live in poverty. Oh, I forgot it. Hold on. I, I didn't clear the thing. I'm going to make you answer it again. I apologize. Okay, so answer that question again. I forgot to clear the whole thing. So put A, B, C, or D. All right. A couple more people answer. What do you think? All right. So a lot of people are saying B, 15%. Some next to C. The answer is in 2007, so this is a little bit older statistic, 18% okay, um, of the children in the United States were in poverty. Okay, They represent a disproportional amount because they can't work, right? And so it, it's really, it's really kind of sad. 13 million children okay, are in poverty. So we have a huge problem even in the United States, and you can think about poor in the United States and poor in Central America is completely different. Um, Central America, I mean, they're it's it's bad, but it, it's it's an issue that you have to deal with. We have to deal with and think about. Okay. Okay. So a total of forty three point two million people in Central America, and over half of them are poor. Okay. So that's approximately twenty two million people are in poverty, which is probably more than, you know, that. So somebody said child labor laws. Yeah, so um, that's what we we're going to talk about just right now. So one of the things is, and it's really sad, is these children, as soon as they're old enough, they're going to have to farm or they have to work somewhere. They don't get to go to school. And we know uh, if you guys take my personal finance class, which everybody has to for graduation, actually, the more education you have, the least likely you're going to be in poverty. Okay, so if you go, if you get your diploma, you're not, you're less likely to be in uh, poverty, especially if you get some kind of technical school or college education. So child labor is big because they can't go to school and get those benefits. So you guys are lucky. You guys will be able to you can go to school and stay out of there. Okay, that leads us to the very end. Uh, so we have a exit ticket uh, right there. I'm actually going to copy this and put it in the chat as well for you guys. Um, and that's it. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop the recording real quick, but I'll stay after and answer any questions that you may have, okay?